never mentioned that. I just probed you a few minutes ago as to when you first started calling out the inmates, and you said you did that at the door. Oh, well, I didn't understand at that time, sir. But I did, I mentioned it before. You saying that you started calling out from the first window? Yeah, I started calling for Jormina, too. So you saying you started calling out from the first window? Yes. And you called out at the second window? Well, as I was going on, keep calling. No, you just answered my question, yes or no. You called out at the second window? Yes, sir. And the third window? Yes, sir. And the fourth window? Well, when I reach the fourth window, I just want to see the prisoners there. Oh, you didn't see anyone at the first, yes. second, and third window? No, I didn't see no one there. Right. And you said you went to the door? Yes, sir. And you started calling, you started calling out the inmates? No, when I reach at the door, they didn't see the inmates. Oh, I see. And what were they doing when you saw them? Um, some of them were spunting for bed. And what was your next what was your next move? Uh, I want them to say, Spirit, help me, come save me and I saw Olana <coughs> Olana come in this and I run to the front of the building and in front of the houses that they were living persons in the building still. So you ran to the front of the building. Who was with you at that time? Um, no, I didn't. Well, he wasn't with me at that time. You were the only inmate who was there to alert the other inmates inside of the living unit? Was there to alert them? No, you mentioned that you, you called out through the side doors, right? You yes, guys sir. broke through capital, old capital E yes, to get the new capital. A, correct? Yes, sir. And I'm asking you if you were the only inmate who went along the walkway towards that door well, or whether course. there were other inmates with you. The other inmates went to the front and they went down to the side. Right. And um, you began communicating with an inmate at the door. Yes, sir. And you retreated back down the the walkway to the western door, correct? Yes, sir. And did you enter the living unit? Which, which would be which unit, Capitale? Yes, where the uh, injured and the deceased inmates were. Yeah, that was after we opened the door, sir. Yes, sir. Right. And you would agree that no, no one stopped you from doing that? No correctional officer prevented you from doing that? Oh, sir. Right. And you would, you would agree as well that correctional officers actually allowed you and other inmates to enter that living unit to bring out the injured inmates? No, sir, I had no choice. No, hang on, just answer my question. You said they had no choice? Not all of us, because personally he was angry at the said thing, so. No, but you would agree you would agree that they had no choice as well because the inmates were assaultive towards them and they, were, they wouldn't have been assaultive towards you. Isn't that what the case is? No, sir. I'm going to suggest to you that's exactly what the case was. That your fellow inmates, we just discussed the culture. Tread lightly, no, please, counsel. They would not have, thank you, Madam Commissioner, they would not have assaulted you. They were not assault nobody because, you know, they were playing for their life. So I don't think that somebody was begging for their life would try to assault somebody that's trying to help them, whether it be an uh, officer. Because at that point in time, they were glad for anybody come and save them, even as a little baby. So, well, we don't know that. You would agree that officer safety is paramount. <coughs> you would agree with that, right? Yeah. You would agree also that officer safety... Does, does no, he know sir. what paramount means? This is what I was now going to ask him, sir. My <laughs> wife. <laughs> You would agree that officer safety at the Georgetown prison is an important consideration when officers are entering living units. Could you please repeat yourself, sir?
Mr. Chair, would the, would the commission say that that's a, a fair question? Yeah. To consider if the officer's safety is most important? He's How would that asking an opinion. That's about all. We take his answer for what it is, if he answers. You would agree that if you're looking out for your safety and the safety of others, you have to ensure that you're first protected. Yes, sir. And you would agree that that same principle would apply to correctional officers. They have to ensure that their safety is protected before they look after anyone else's safety. So, as an individual, I would say so, but, you know, I, I suggest that the profession that you're having, you know, knowing that you have people in lockdown buildings, it would best to be concerned about everybody's safety. Yes, but you, you, you don't expect correctional officers to run into a situation where without proper um, support, if people are stabbing, stabbing them with uh, broken um, shanks or broken improvised weapons. You wouldn't expect them to run into that situation unless they have the adequate manpower and resources. Well, from my point of view, I think they had because you know, they had shield, they had protective gear, so. And you think, you think they're pretty well? Let me ask you this. Did you see the correctional officers wearing body armor? Did they have on body armor? No, sir, but they had shields. And you mentioned that there was only one firearm that you saw, correct? So, yeah, I saw Mr. Fire, Mr. Summers with right. a firearm. And you saw no other officers with firearms? Well, earlier, earlier, before the incident kick off. No, we're talking about when the incident kick off. Well, at the time, yes, sir. Right. And so I'm going to suggest to you that that would not have provided adequate protection against 24 inmates. But that wasn't necessary. That force wasn't necessary at the time. Well, I'm going to suggest to you that it actually was when inmates are... Because you were officers with... G3 rifles are so in the yard, so it would take somebody out of their mind to try to go up against a firearm, sir, especially if you don't have a similar weapon like that, you know? Well, so. that didn't prevent the inmates from stabbing and poking at officers. You'd agree with that? Well, I didn't see, so I can't see. So. Well, well, not <coughs> just that. You would have seen when the inmates were, you would have seen the bricks that were raining down from that capital unit on officers. You saw that, didn't you? I saw that the day, the day, after, the day after. I ah, won't say about the day about, before. Let's stick to March 3rd. You saw that. You, 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 you don't have any problem with your sight, correct? No, sir, I don't have any problem. Right. Well, then... You, you tell the commissioners what you saw. You saw bricks being rained down at officers from that unit, didn't you? I would be lying if I say yes, sir. Was that? I would be lying if I say yes. How oh, would be say lying that. if you said yes? So you saw no such thing? No, sir. And you didn't saw when they were poking at the officers? No, sir. And you didn't saw when they were throwing urine at the officer? No, sir. But you saw Samuel's gun. That's, all, that's what you saw. Sir, if somebody's walking up and down with something in their hands, it, 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 it's easy to see it. And if somebody, if somebody continually raining, raining bricks down at someone else, or a group of people are doing the same thing, wouldn't the same principle apply? Yes, sir. But and so you, I'm going to suggest to you that you are mistaken when you said that you, don't, you didn't see Bricks being hard than rain. I can't be mistaken, officers. sir. I can't be mistaken because if I didn't see, I can't say that I saw. That's your evidence. 
you would agree that when you enter the living unit, the officers allowed you, and you, and I think you agreed with it already, the officers allowed you to enter the living unit without any problem. You said before they didn't have a chase, sir. Well, just answer yes or no. The officers allowed you to enter and they did not stop There wasn't no one there to say yes or no, sir. Well, I'm going to suggest to you that there was. And we're, we're going to backtrack, but I want to stick on that for a second. There wasn't no one there to see whether to go or not to go. All right. We just so entered the building because just to render system to the injured inmates. All right, let's, let's, test, let's, test, let's test your evidence. You would have seen the efforts that the officers made to open the door of the capital block, eh? correct? Yes, sir. You would have seen the officers trying to cut open the door, the lock. Yes, sir. You would have as well heard, let me, you would recognize um, Superintendent Pilgrim's voice, wouldn't you? Yes, sir. And you would have heard Superintendent Pilgrim <coughs> given commands to the inmates that remained in Capital A prior to the major fire, the second fire, which was a major fire. So, sir, before you go far, when you say second fire, I didn't even know there was a, a forest fire. Well, there were two fires. The, the second was a major one. Yes, sir. 